Hi and welcome back to getting started with processing and in this video as I said we're going to try to kind of quote unquote optimize this program although it is very short it will teach us a bit more about processing. So one of the first things I notice here is that we have two if statements this one and this one. I want to join them in just one big if statement. However, the if statement does one thing here and a different thing here. So if I join them on one big if statement, then I can't do two different things. So I need to try to find a solution first for this problem. How can we make these two statements the same? And the answer to that is this. Let me tell you why. dx starts as 1. When the ball bounces on the right, we multiply dx by minus 1 and we assign it back to the x. So the x is now minus 1. When the ball bounces back from the left, we multiply dx by minus 1 and assign it to dx. This gives us dx equal to 1, and then so on and so on. So this indeed does the same thing. It changes dx to minus 1 and then to 1. So this means that we no longer need two different if statements to do this. We can join these two together into one big if statement. So I want to do this if the ball hits the right wall or if the ball hits the left wall. And fortunately for us, there is an operator for this or word that was so important in that sentence. If it hits the right or if it hits the left. These two vertical lines mean or. So then I copy this into here. If x plus 25 is greater than width, this means the ball hits the right, or x minus 25 is less than 0, we hit the left wall, we multiply dx by minus 1. We can now delete this if statement. Let's see if this works. We're going to hit the right wall, and then we're going to multiply dx by minus 1. So dx is going to turn into minus 1, since 1 times minus 1 equals minus 1. And then minus 1 times minus 1 equals 1, so we move right. So this does exactly what we want it to do, and now it is shorter and more concise. What else can we do? Processing has a shorthand for multiplication. So dx equals dx times minus 1 can be simplified to dx times equals minus 1. This means dx equals dx times. So here what we're doing is dx equals dx times minus 1, essentially multiplying dx by minus 1, or dx multiply and assign by minus 1. And similarly, we can do the same thing here, x plus equal dx. And now we will see the same thing happens, and now the program is shorter and I would argue more readable. So there we go. The last thing we can do is we can make the ball go a bit faster. So instead of 1 I'm going to do 5. Now we can see the ball is indeed moving a bit faster. Which in turn makes it more fun for us. For testing purposes. So there we go. In this video we have seen how to optimize the program by using the OR operator. This means we run this statement if this OR these happen. 
as well as the or, we have the if. Sorry, the, the and. So we have or, which are the two vertical lines, and we have and, which are two ampersand signs. So the and means this only runs if both this one and this one are true. Obviously, in our case, the ball cannot be hitting the right and the left walls at the same time, so this one wouldn't make sense. But just for your information, that is also a thing you can do, and we will use it a lot in the future. So in the next video, we're going to be working a bit more on this ellipse, and soon we'll move on to another different project. So stick with me, and let's go into the next one.